is another beautiful sunny Parisian day. Today is Friday. I just had one of the most amazing meals that I've had since being in Paris. I'm very, very grateful for that. A friend of mine from Italy um, came by and we shared a meal together. Now I am heading a little later than normal to start my day. I had a pretty good sleep. We found a place to stay. All of that is wonderful. So now we will repeat the process. Go to our next district, apply for places to stay, hopefully find somewhere, do some writing, some recharging. I feel great though. I do want to say that. I think for the last few days, I have been out of it for the most part. I haven't been feeling the best. And I feel that yesterday, maybe after um, being with the kids, uh, talking with the mom, talking with my mom. I don't know, I just felt like kind of recharged, kind of like a new sense of hope. So I'm really happy for that. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you my view right now. I'm starting to learn like from which view of the Eiffel Tower, I can kind of gauge which district I'm in. I spent the night in the 15th, which is also where I work. And now I am heading to the 18th, where we will do today's video. Oh, it's been so nice. It really has. So, <laughs> on the topic of budgeting, I'm just going to pivot a little bit. I'm going to just talk about this very briefly. On the, on the topic of budgeting, I make about... I'll pause a little for this. I make about $70 a week with um, my nanny job, which is not a lot at all. But if I am very serious about saving, because I want my own place in October, if I save half of that, 35, that's, that's not much at all. It's not. 35 a week, I think that will look equate to, let me see, 150, about 140, 150 at the end of the month. Trying to do another job that also pays about 15, do a little more of that. My goal is to secure 300. I think if I can do 300, I can maybe find a place for October. There are places on Facebook for about four or five. So it is doable. I am, I am hopeful about what next month will look like. Just got to do a lot of work this month in order to make that happen. All right, everyone, still leaving the 15th. Um, I just thought about something. Apparently there's a community event going on in front of the city hall, which is what we're passing right now. And for whatever reason, I thought this would be a good time to review the food that I just ate. Tartar. Oh my God. <laughs> my first, my first French meal. It was, uh, it was pretty, it was awesome. I love raw meat. This is my first time having raw beef. Had rare before. This was very rare. <laughs> Not cooked at all. Um, that was a first and it was it was great um i tried again in a different region my italian friend was saying that the french do things differently and i'm learning that is a theme I'm use the restaurant real quick hey everyone wolfred here i am walking around the more residential part of the 18th it's a beautiful district, it's so much, so much to do, but I wanted to uh, record this quick video. Um, it's like, <laughs> and I think today is, it's actually like a collection of thoughts more than, more than showing you around. I'm gonna make sure to balance it out with editing, but I think one of the most romantic things that about the city of Paris or any large city in general is when two people fall in love. Um, and do so when there's so many options. To me, that's something really magical and special. There's like millions of people in a city and you manage to... You manage to find a connection. That's, that's something that's really beautiful because um, when you're in a small city like where I'm from, you know, and that happens, there aren't too many options. But when that can exist in somewhere larger and, and grander, like the city of Paris, it 
that is romantic. The city itself is, is not, but that aspect is. So now without further ado, let's just, let's just do the tour. I'm leaving the park right now and heading to Moulin Rouge for our final spot in today's district and today's arrondissement. 18 is definitely my favorite arrondissement. If I had to choose one to bring someone to show them the romantic side, romantic idealistic side of, of Paris, it would definitely be here. It is it just has so many things. There's so many people. It, it's a different energy than you feel when you go to the Eiffel Tower and people are just taking pictures and um, and going, you know? It's somewhere that you can sit for and enjoy. There's so much to enjoy here. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for today. I had lunch with a friend. We talked about love. And, uh, and now we are going to see where see where love began at the cabaret at Moulin Rouge. So that is our next spot, our next destination. I will see you guys there. Hey everyone, Wolfred here. So we have finished our exploration of the 18th of Rodonisville, but now we're at Moulin Rouge and it's nighttime and I thought it would be the perfect time to show you guys how everything looks at night. So the 18th is a beautiful arrondissement uh, in the daytime, but in the night, it's a, it's a completely different vibe. So I'm gonna go down here a little bit, um, up here late, um, don't have a place to stay just yet. So I think it's a perfect time to take you guys around the nightlife and show you just uh, what nightlife in Paris is really like. All right, everyone, it's Friday night. Everyone is hanging out. We have lots of streets options to go down. Um, something that's really odd about this main street, a lot of these are clubs. It's club, sex shop, club, sex shop. And it's quite different than anything else in Paris. The 18th is definitely has a character of its own. I can't wait to show you guys. Let's go ahead and walk down this, this main strip right now. Go there, because It just occurred to me why the theme is like it, like the way it is. So we have different cabaret bars and the sex shops. It just makes sense. It's all part of the theme. So here's here's an example. So as you guys can see. This bar, club, sex shop stretches on for the entire street on both sides and in between the alleyways as well, the cruise. Um, so we're gonna keep on walking through and see, see what else we discover. Right. We have more sex shops. This is a public urinal. So that is the first one that I've seen here in Paris. The 18th is very unique. It, it has a different flair to it. So in addition to having the, um, I'm gonna call them communal landmarks. And it's just landmarks where you kind of take your time. You take your pictures, of course, but you spend some, some more time there than you would um, some of the other more uh, popular, popular ones. Uh, it makes me really fond of the 18th. So we see right here. More cabaret style shows. All very nice. It follows the theme. It's, it's really, really cool. Even though the cabaret is really cool, I think my favorite part of this district would have to be Momar. Uh, just the hill, the beautiful church. It's, it's a really special place. The view is wonderful of Paris. Look at that. It's like pretty popular. It's like a restaurant almost. tempted to go inside one of these and just see and check it out but I know it's going to be no recording allowed so 
I don't want to disappoint you guys. I will have to do a full review on one of these cabaret bars. I think it'll be fun. Moulin Rouge is quite expensive, but we'll see if we can maybe work our way up or uh, maybe splurge for the occasion. As you can see, very creative names throughout this street. I am craving a cocktail. I have to, <laughs> I have to save up some money for a nice cocktail one of these nights and come back to, to the 18. We are coming towards the end of the street, which means I am coming towards the end of my night. I've had so much fun taking you guys around the 18th all day long. It's been a great time. It's been a wonderful day. I'm so grateful for that. Hope you all have a wonderful day um, and explore wherever you are. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.